gold got to its lowest level in three months. It's up a little bit today. Hedge fund manager Lloyd Connor says gold is undervalued. He thinks it could double in the next 12 months, and he's here to explain why. Good to see you, Lloyd. Great to be here. Um, the stock market has done pretty well this month. It's up around 8% or so. Gold's been moving in the other direction. Is that the main story for the gold weakness we have seen recently? Yeah, I think that it's really a technical thing. Uh, it was overbought and also the deflation scare. I think that's what got some of the fundamental owners to uh, maybe back off a little bit. That's the one month story, but the 12 month story is that gold has been very hot. But you're a value guy across the board and you still think there is some value in the gold story. Yeah, I think that uh, with gold, the supply demand imbalance is now just starting. It will stay out of balance for a very long time, many, many years. And But the bottom line is really the global reserve currencies should remain weak. If they remain weak, gold should get stronger. What about jewelry demand uh, at these higher prices for gold? Does that affect the story too? A little bit, but at this point, it's investment demand that's driving the price of gold. Uh, speaking of investors, there are a lot of names that like gold we hear about all the time. John Paulson, David Einhorn. Uh, people play gold different ways these days. They play them through the ETFs. They play them sometimes through the stocks like Newmont, which Scarlett was just telling us about. Uh, what do you suggest when people are playing gold? I think that if you're going to get involved with gold as an individual investor, or even as a professional, I would start with an ETF. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier. It's liquid. If you're very large, go with physical because it's a little bit less expensive. Individual mining companies can be tricky. Here's the thing with Newmont this morning. The company's earnings fell short of estimates, as Scarlett was telling us, partly because of what happened with production. But they did boost their dividend. Any thoughts on the reason for that? Yeah, and they even kind of hinted at it in their release that they want to compete more with the ETFs that have been taking a lot of those investment dollars from the individual companies to the ETFs. That's a big development, that these gold producers are feeling like they have a lot of competition with the ETFs. Is that is that what's happening? They've talked about it in the past. They didn't know what to do. I think this is a first major shot across the bow by a major company, the second largest in the world, to say, hey, pay attention to us. You're not a gold bug, but you are a gold bull, like a lot of people out there. So you, when you're buying gold, you make it a small piece of your overall portfolio. Is that right? Yeah, for the last five years, it's been between 5 and 10% of the portfolio, which is a good size, but not really 100%, where the gold bugs go basically all in. Here's where people maybe scratch their head a little bit. You mentioned inflation earlier, inflation versus deflation, inflation something down the road that maybe helps the gold price. In the meantime, a lot of people talking about deflation. How do those stories affect gold, say, over the next year? Well, deflation is probably the biggest negative for gold. So if you think there's going to be a lot of deflation, you basically don't want to own gold. I don't think that's the case. I think headline inflation is understated. And going forward right now, India is talking about a 10% inflation rate. In, uh, China also sees wage inflation. So I think that when you think about inflation, you've got to go outside the United States uh, for the short term. So you're not thinking about the fiscal picture here in the United States alone. You've got to think about the global story. With, yeah, it's with a global gold. commodity. What about the fact off the top we said that stocks have had a nice month and gold's down. Now, if you're somebody who's bullish on the market and a lot of people say, hey, stocks are cheap, here's a great opportunity to get in, earnings have been strong. If that proves to be right and over the next three, four months you see stocks continue to rise, what does that do to gold? Well, gold has been rising with stocks over the last few years. I think right now you're having a little technical dip plus the deflation. So I think it might be a good idea to buy a little bit of gold right now. If you're interested in owning gold, your downside might be 10%. Your upside you know, could be a hell of a lot more. Now, you're somebody who invests in all sorts of companies. You invest in a lot of consumer companies, Starbucks, and you do value-based analysis on those companies. But what about with gold? I mean, there's no personality. There's no management for gold. There's so how, how do you go about doing the value style of invest uh, analysis for something like gold. Well, what brought me in a few years ago was the supply demand, the looming supply demand imbalance that was coming, which is now hitting. So that allowed me as a die in the wool fundamental investor to be comfortable. I could latch on to that. But there are managements of the individual mining companies. So if you want to go with find the best in breed and go with them, that's a good way to go. You got to make sure the production rates are going to stay solid and their operating costs aren't going to rise too much more. All right. Lloyd, thanks for your time this morning. That's Lloyd Connor, Connor Capital Management.